Hello everyone, The Flying Scotsman here. Welcome to this video. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can prepare a laptop for sale. Now, this laptop has already been sold and it just needs to be sent out to the buyer. But there's some things that I'm going to need to do on this machine in order for that to happen. So, the first thing that we need to worry about is data security. Because if you're selling the machine with a hard drive or an SSD or other kind of storage medium in there, you're going to want to make sure that your data is not already on there. So you're going to need to delete it. Now, just deleting stuff in Windows Explorer is not going to suffice. Quite easily recoverable. And I will say, actually, that no data is 100% destroyable. There's always going to be traces of the data on there. And, you know, that is something to think about. But it does, but secure erasing a hard drive or an SSD would make it a lot more difficult for that data to be recovered. So if you're selling a machine with a drive in it, this is the way you would go about wiping it. If you're not selling the machine with a drive in, in, it, in it, you're wanting to remove the drive, please take it out of its caddy and return the caddy to the machine. All too often, it's possible to buy laptops that are not only missing the hard drive, but also the caddy. And I've actually had to throw out perfectly good machines for the simple reason that I could not get the corresponding caddies. So please don't keep the caddies. Just a wee editorial here. I would like to say that before we actually continue doing anything on this video with this machine, please be aware that everything we are going to do on this machine will destroy any data existing on the hard drive. So if you're going to sell a machine, yes, it's important to delete everything that you don't want other people to get a hold of, but it is equally as important to make sure if you're planning to blank a hard drive, install an operating system, reinstall an operating system, even dual booting or multi-booting, you must back everything of importance up. You can either do it through a myriad of cloud services, stuff like CrashPlan and what have you. You could do it by copying everything over to an external hard drive, a USB drive, DVDs, file server, network, network attached file storage. Just whatever method you choose, make sure everything is backed up. This channel cannot be held responsible and will not be held responsible for any loss of data that may occur from following these instructions. Right, so back to this one. How are we going to secure erase it? Well, we're actually going to use an older bit of software that I probably wouldn't recommend using nowadays. We're going to use D-Bands Boot and Nuke. This is an older machine and it has a hard drive, so it will actually work. So you, what you do with Boot and Nuke um, is you copy it to a data bagel, also known as a CD. Now it has to be a CD, as I found out, because I tried copying it to a flash drive. Should have tried with Rufus. But I tried with Bellina Etcher and it said, there's no bootable file system on here. Are you sure this is right? And I said, yes, 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 it's fine. Now shut up. It flushed the flash drive with the image. And then I went to boot the laptop up and it booted into Windows 7, even when I told it to boot from the USB drive. So it has to be a CD-ROM. So what you would do is you would shut down your computer, restart it, Press a key to boot, choose which device to boot from, and boot from the CD-ROM. And then you will be uh, brought into this boot and nuke environment. It's, uh, it's Linux based. And you can, you've got different choices for how, how secure you want your data erased. We're just gonna go with the normal uh, three pass usually suffices and yeah do department of defense short i think that's three pass um verify using last pass um 
Entropy Linux kernel. Um, yeah. So we're just going to go for this. Now, we need to tell dbamboot and nuke what uh, drive you want to wipe. So use the arrow keys to select it if there's more than one. And then press the space bar to tell it that. And it will say wipe. And then you press F10 to start it. And then you remember that you're working with a Hewlett Packard computer from the uh, early 2010s. You remember that these generally aren't the best. So you press FN and F10 in disgust and it starts. So I will leave that to take a while. I would tell you to go make yourself a cup of tea, but you're still going to be at 0, 0.0 something percent by the time you've made it. So go out for a nice meal. In fact, no, go uh, go away. <laughs> go away for the day or something. It's going to take hours to do this. So, you know, this isn't a five-minute job. So with that said, I guess I could end the video here. But before I do, I want to talk about another way that you could delete stuff. So, alternatively, I've recently picked up this device. Um, it's a Wavelink hard... Um, hard drive SSD dock and it will take both two two and a half inch and three and a half inch SSDs and that's coupled up with some software here called HDD Shredder 6 now this is a free version so you only have basic deletion functions whereas if you wanted the uh, pro version you've got basic well you've got basic standard professional and portable um, but I do believe it does secure it and you can actually make bootable media. So I could have used that. Alternatively, if you're sensible, you can just use Linux. And according to addictivetips.com, you can open a terminal in Linux, make sure you unmount your drive and then type sudo space dd space f equals slash dev slash u random space of equals slash dev slash sd however many uh, what your um hard drive is actually called dev sda usually or b or c or whatever um space bs equals 10 m and that will use u random to write zeros on top of your entire hard drive and it's going to take a long time. Best way to go about using DD in this manner is to turn it on and let it run overnight. When the next day comes around, everything should be good to go. You'll know that the DD command is done when you can type in the terminal window again. So thank you to addictivetips.com. Not a sponsored spot, by the way, guys. So back to this machine. I'm just going to let this finish. And then I will rejoin you. So here we are with the laptop with a now clean hard drive. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to install Windows 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press the button. And because it's an HP, I need to press F9 to boot. Now, I've started the machine up with a flash drive in one of the USB ports that has Windows 10 on it. So, ah, oh, this is <laughs> this is going to be like another laptop that um, I serviced a few weeks ago, and that um, I wonder if it's going to. Yep, there we go, there we go. There's a Toshiba laptop that I serviced a couple of weeks ago. I did have a video on it, but the whole thing was just a disaster zone start to finish, so I decided not to go with it. But that did what this one has just done and made like it wasn't going to boot Windows 10. That happens, you've just got to wait for it, it will eventually get there. So, now we're in setup, what we can do is I'm going to just go ahead and install it. Because this machine uses MBR, we're not going to need to convert the hard drive to GPT, but just in case 
just if you wanted to make sure everything's working, you can press Shift and F10. You might need to press Fn if your um, function keys have uh, primary uses. We can go to disk part. Just check that the hard disk is indeed there. And this is taking a long time to come up. There we go. And we can list disk. Type list disk. That will list all the volumes. Um, and here we have the um, one terabyte volume. Whoops. And then we can type. We want to select the one terabyte hard drive. So select disk zero. And then we can type clean. And that'll just clean. That'll just reinitialize the hard disk. Don't necessarily need to do this, but just in case you wanted to, that is uh, that is a way to go. Now, be aware that doing this, just like with everything else we've done in this video, ta cleaning a hard disk will erase everything off it, so make sure you've backed up everything before you even start this process. Now we just want to install Windows 10, so install now. Now I have the product key, but you don't need it. You could just go to, I don't have a product key, and then go on to select the version of Windows that you wish to install. Um, if you've got a key in your computer's BIOS, because of Secure Boot, it will automatically select the version of Windows whose license is held within the computer. But as this is old enough to not support Secure Boot, I will have to put the product key in manually, so I'll do that now. And now we are at the user license agreement screen. Can I accept this? Now in the words of Cortana, you don't need to accept this, but then, well, no windows. So I've accepted the license agreement. Now we need to select the drive to install windows on. To do that, we need to go to custom install. There's the hard drive of this machine that we've just cleaned. And I'm literally just going to click next and have Windows partition and format the drive automatically. Now, this computer does have a hard disk drive in it, but if you are installing Windows 10 for yourself, I would recommend if you can afford it and depending on your space constraints and how you're storing data and what have you, I would recommend getting a solid state drive. Windows nowadays, it takes ages to run on hard drives and given this machine's meager spec anyway it's not going to make for the most pleasant of experiences but um, an ssd really can boost your computer up and speed it right up even for older machines you will still you can still depending on the uh, type of machine it is you can still get a speed boost. I mean, if you're installing a SATA SSD into a Windows XP or Windows 2000 box, don't expect massive speed jumps, but for, for newer machines, yes, you will definitely, definitely get a much needed speed boost that will make your computer usable, I think, for longer. So this is gonna take a while, especially as it's installing to a hard drive. So, we're just going to let that continue on its way and it'll be a good time to get a cup of tea. So now Windows has spent about five minutes getting ready. This is something that I completely forgot about on hard disk based systems. That process takes a long time. So guys, Windows has spent about five minutes getting ready. This is something that I don't miss on SSD based systems. That portion can take a long time on a hard disk, but I think we are seeing the end of setup in our sites now. So with that all said, 
I'm going to show you how we can hopefully get around the Windows 10 Home problem of having to sign in with a bloody Microsoft account. That is annoying. You have to do that on Windows 11 Home. You have to. It, you know, it won't seem to let you in unless you have a bloody Microsoft account. This is why I insist on Pro. And because this is such an old machine, hopefully I won't need any drivers. Save for mouse. But um, hopefully Windows 10 is usually uh, pretty good in that it will find hardware drivers automatically. Whether they're the best ones or not is entirely up to you, but it will find them. If your hardware vendor offers drivers for Windows 10 for your machine, go get them from there. Otherwise, I guess we are just looking at Microsoft ones. So again, this is taking longer because of hard disk. Luckily though, this machine is from a time when you could still upgrade things. So installing an SSD is actually quite easy and cheap. As long as you know how to install Windows, which, well, I guess I've just shown you. I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. Yes. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way. I am a professional. Quiet, and yet, how many times have I seen this out of the box experience? Towards the bottom of your screen. If you need an assistive screen reader, press the Windows, Control and Enter keys at the same time to turn on the rater. Which has gotten a lot better. Enough intro. Let's dig in. Oh, more waiting. Your region is set to United Kingdom. Is that correct? Unfortunately, yes. Yes. Your keyboard is set to United Kingdom. Would you like to stick with that? Unfortunately, yes. Yes. Do you also type with another keyboard layout? No. Now, let's get you connected to a network. Let's not just yet. That way, you can get updates, apps, and... Let's not connect to a network just, so just you yet. Know, connecting... That way we can make an offline account. Now... Type what you want to name your account. And because this machine is uh, being shipped okay. out, we're not going to bother with a password. Choose if you want to let Microsoft and other apps use your location to help you with directions, weather and more. No, we don't. And if you ever lose your device, here is what... No. Nope. Next, choose whether or not you want to help Microsoft... The Basic. And if you want to help improve language recognition... Absolutely not. ...offers and suggestions that are tailored to you, just select accept. Nope. Finally, for these settings, choose whether or not... Nine... Hey, look, that's me, Cortana. No! <laughs> Almost done now. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you, and Windows will be all yours. Looking forward to helping out. I'm sure you are, Cortana. I'm sure you are. How much are Microsoft paying you for all this data that you're getting from us? But now that we have a local account, we can connect up to the network.
So Windows is not wrong. Again on a hard drive. This, there's no might about it. That part will take several minutes. So it's, um, this is showing why Windows 10 needs an SSD and Windows 11 as well. I mean, people have asked me for advice on buying new laptops and I've told them, look, you need to spend a bit extra to get a solid state drive because it's almost instantaneous access. Whereas a hard drive, it's got to go and find things on different areas of platters. That takes time. The mechanics of a hard drive takes time. And Windows 10 is that bloated, and Windows 11, that a hard disk is just not going to suffice. So if you're building a new computer, or you're buying a new computer, you're specking a new computer today in 2021, um, even if you're specking it in 2017. So if people from 2017 are somehow watching this video from the future, listen up. You need a solid state drive as your boot drive, because if not, you're just going to end up spending a lot of time waiting for your computer to come up. And the longer I have to wait for this, the longer you have to listen to me complain. Anyway, now we are at the desktop. So really, there's not much else to do. So Windows now should be activated because I put a product key in. It's online now because I plugged the network cable in. Microsoft servers should be able to see this computer with the correct license number. And yeah, we should be uh, good to go. So the next thing you want to do is get yourself some drivers. First of all, we could go to Hewlett Packard's website and see if there's any drivers there. We better hope that there's a display driver found soon. So we have a system SKU. Hopefully I'll be able to type that into HP's website in order to get um, the drivers and everything for this machine. Oh, we need a display driver, so I might actually be able to use a magnifier and see the blue-in thing. Whoops. Oh, me. Best way to do that is to go, go to hp.com. Go to support, then software and drivers. Now you can have HP detect your products, but it's better if you can type in your serial number up until the hash ABU part. 
Oh. And it's saying it's temporarily unavailable. I do not believe you. So now we have some rudimentary display drivers installed, I can use a manager. And by using the SKU number, the SKU number, I was able to find out some information about this machine. It's an HP Pavilion G6-1302. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the drivers page. And there we go. Um, unfortunately, there's no drivers on here for Windows 10. So, for certain things, you're probably going to want drivers, like, the, like I said before, the mouse. So, not a bad idea to see if you can go back to Windows 8 for drivers. There we go. And there, oh, actually what seems to have happened is Windows has gotten the drivers, so that's maybe not a bad thing. But if you want to get um, the drivers uh, manually, then you can do. I think I will let HP's website download them for me. Hey guys. Well, that's a webcam working. So, I've managed to install the webcam correctly. Now we're just on to installing apps. I've installed all the updates. They've taken an age. But now, I'm just going to install a few apps so that the new user of this laptop can get straight away started. And once I've done that, I'll be done with this machine. So what's the next stage? Well, I think we should pull a piece of rye and use some eucalyptus oil based cleaner to uh, clean this machine down. Then I will box it up. I've got a box. I've got a bubble wrap uh, air wallet pocket thing. So I'm going to hopefully put it in there, put it in its, put it in the box and then it will be ready to go on its way. Okay. So I think what I will do is I will end this video here. So thank you all for watching and please join me for my next video. Cheerio bye. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. You could also subscribe to the channel and hit the wee bell icon to be notified when I have published a new video. But until then, please feel free to check out some of my previous videos.